All right, so we just got episode five of The Acolyte season one. It was called Night. It could have been called also Murky or Dark, not just because of the plot of the episode, but also the cinematography. And I've certainly got some mixed feelings on this one, which, by the way, is why I'm really glad I've got you guys. I can bounce my ideas and my thoughts off the community that we've built here. And hopefully you guys do the same down in the comments. Now, as a note, of course, as with all of these videos, Full spoilers, this episode had twists, turns, and revelations, so if you'd rather experience that first for yourself, go watch the thing. Also, I'm not contractually obligated to say this, but very lucky to have a sponsor today in War of Thunder. We'll talk about them in like a minute or so, but... Before I get into my impressions, I do want to give just a general plot rundown. This one is pretty simple. It picked up right directly after last episode. We've got the Jedi facing off against the newly introduced bad guy, an individual who later calls himself a Sith. In combat, the Sith's got a few cool moves. He scampers off screen a lot, even when his opponents are weakened. He's got what appears to be both a Cortosis helmet and gauntlet, and he's got this neat lightsaber, not unlike Cal's from Fallen Order, which he can split in half and use as two blades. I actually quite liked the lightsaber combat, and the Sith managed to dispatch not only the red shirts, but also Jekki and Yord, which, to be honest, was pretty surprising. I thought the choreography was really fun. Anyway, after the Jedi are dispatched, we have... Emotional turmoil between the twins. We learn there's more to Master Saul's history. And the episode actually ends with May taking the place of Osha and leaving with Saul to escape the planet. After, by the way, and I'm not joking, the Sith is literally carried away by bugs. So basically, May and Osha switched places, and the Sith is certainly left with the problem of having to, in his own words, eliminate all the Jedi to ensure that his secret doesn't reach the wider galaxy. That's the plot summary. I'm going to quickly do the sponsored segment now. Today's video is brought to you by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and now available for free on PC and consoles. If you watch this channel, you probably like aircraft and vehicles blowing each other up. Well, in War Thunder, you can take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations. And combat isn't just whittling down an HP bar. Shoot at something in War Thunder, and you're hitting a heavily detailed object. The type of damage you do will depend on not just where you hit and what systems you hit, but the type of ammo you're using. Destruction scenes play alongside this really cool x-ray view where you can see precisely what led to the killing blow. If it's your own vehicle, it might hurt a little bit more because War Thunder has in-depth customization. You can join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PVP battles, featuring detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects. There's no better game suited for fans of military history. And right now, you can play for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox by using the link in the pinned comment and description. Right now, new players and returning players who haven't played for six months who sign up using the link across all platforms We'll get multiple premium vehicles, the Eagle of Valor exclusive vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of a premium account. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Again, you can play for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation by using the link in the description and the pinned comment. The bonuses for new and returning players are only for a limited time, so be sure you act fast. All right, so thoughts on this episode, and they're mixed. I liked a lot of what the episode did, but as has been the case throughout, I've got some major issues with a lot of how the episode is structured and directed, which ends up taking away from my enjoyment. I mean, for one, it's just not a nice episode to look at. The lighting is not only dark, but very flat. I mean, you've watched it yourself. I'm sure you can see it. But I mean, for two, this episode to me was just too goofy. Listen, Star Wars is a goofy series. We've got farm boys rescuing princesses. We've got frequent use of circle wipes. It's fine, but this episode was just too much. And you can tell that they needed to get from point A to point B. They need to have all these character interactions and they didn't find a good way to do it. There were so many times where people were temporarily knocked out or shocked or where the Sith scampered from place to place simply for necessity. Oh, we need to have a sequence where Jackie and the Sith are alone for dramatic tension. Well, have him scamper away, but we want him to kill her later when she's in front of everyone. Well, he disappears before the killing blow. 
Osha stuns Mei with her blaster, then Mei stuns Osha. It just happened so much that it really takes away from my enjoyment of the episode and makes the entire situation feel quite contrived. It's kind of funny because to me, it reminded me a lot of how TV shows often operate, but the problem is, as I've been parroting again and again, the show isn't structured like a TV show. We've got eight episodes, the episodes have been short, and they're telling a multi-part movie, so it's a bit weird. But I did tweet this, if I ever got a job at Disney, I'd mandate a new rule where a scene could not end with character scampers off screen. It happened a lot in this show, happened a lot in Kenobi. But I want to move beyond my criticism and talk about the actual meat of the episode because there's a lot to discuss here. And obviously the reveal of Manny Jacinto as the Sith, that's the big talking point, Kamir. I'm actually not sure if things are quite as simple as they appear. And I'm going to start off with a somewhat crazy theory. I don't think Mr. Toothy here actually is a Sith. I think he doesn't know what he is and he probably understands that sith are a thing so has given himself that moniker like you have to think about it the sith of this era were legends they were thought extinct for a thousand years a dark sider who doesn't like jedi might simply take their name because they have the values closest to what he has not realizing that the sith are more than that. They're lineage. They're the sworn enemy of the Jedi. They're like a religion. They don't simply want to kill Jedi or be evil. They want total domination. They want the galaxy. There are elements of how he operates which mirror the Sith. You know, his desire for freedom from the constraints of the Jedi. That's pretty Sith-like. But his use of the term acolyte, for instance, if he is talking about a true apprentice, that's not Sith-like. And he also does seem to be more of a rogue agent, although perhaps he's just hiding the fact that he's got a master. I don't know. To me, this guy just screams early night of Ren. People even said they could hear Kylo's theme at the end. I personally could not. But my theory is that the Sith obviously do exist in the galaxy. He is just not one of them. And there's even a possibility that they may need to stomp him out for drawing so much attention to the name Sith. I just don't think Sith of this era would so openly operate outside of their master plan. I could be wrong, but just everything about this character to me screams unhinged more than cool calculating and in the shadows. Obviously, I'm willing to continue evaluating evidence, but that's how I feel right now anyway. I don't know. Cultist, early Knights of Ren, although I tweeted this theory out and people are saying that one of the Crimson Rain comics have the Knights of Ren established in the Old Republic era. I don't know, maybe. There are other options. I will say one of the interviews given by the creator also says that she wanted to talk about Sith, the master-apprentice dynamic, how the Acolyte can overturn that, but I don't necessarily take that fully at face value. These interviews have straight up lied before. And to be honest, I actually think her giving that much away in an interview when we don't even know there's supposed to be a master above the apprentice. We'll see. Either way, I assume the Sith's next goal, whether he's a fake Sith or a real Sith, will be to destroy the Jedi. He sees it again as a self-preservation type of thing. They've got to be careful. Like the main canonical issue has been how do they tell this story without upsetting the realities of the Phantom Menace? And I think they still can. But the more people that die, the more this leaves the planet, the more difficult it becomes. What's going on with May and Osha? Like, I don't even know. Their relationship to me is so weird. May especially, like, she's back and forth, back and forth. I can't get a good read on her. Also, there's obviously more regarding the backstory. Master Saul's got some secrets. I mean, overall, there's a lot to like in this episode. But to me, the execution, it's just, it's just still lacking. Once again, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. There is no better game for those who enjoy military history or just blowing things up. You can play for free on console or PC, and if you use the link down in the description, you'll get a bunch of really cool bonuses, including 100,000 Silver Lions and the Eagle of Valor decoration. But let me know your thoughts, of course, down below. With that being said, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.